The Mongol Mirror on Lipany as we jump into a decider game between GUA and I'm um, Avali. GUA being seed 47 against seed 17 Avali, he was quite competitive. So despite the fact that one of the players is much higher seed than the other, this was a very much balanced set. Whenever I see two players pick the same sieve and the loading only shows a flag on one side, I immediately hear the Bane voice in my head. You know, you only adopted the Mongols. I was born it, molded by it. And now, uh, the interesting part is Avali wasn't quite molded by it. I think historically Avali was uh, Roos main. I think that's where he began. Maybe French as well comes to mind were probably his top two sieves. Um, but definitely no stranger to the Mongols. I feel like anyone who wants to play the highest level of every four has to know how to play the Mongols, right? We meme on them, yep. we say the crap in certain kind of like patches, but you know, even if they are the worst performing Civ in competitive in a given patch, it's gonna be like one map where you can just cheese your opponent, right? Just a little outpost here or there. <laughs> Speaking of outposts, there is gonna be Dark Age aggression coming here from Avali. He has a barracks coming up for him, but pressuring this base is gonna be challenging because Avalis got a really good start, give you anxiety rather, has a really good starting location. Wooden gold right next to him. And Deers, despite being on the front, they're actually still pretty close to the TC. So close that he could actually push them in with the Khan. I mean, I think you just play out Gur there. I think that that's another thing. When people start with 12 villages, I mentioned uh, in the pre-show that you're running out of finite resources safe earlier. So you're more inclined to come out your base. That's actually kind of cool because it means that like when you get out, you're usually getting out an early phase before your opponent set up production buildings to threaten you. That being said, given that that early spearman aggression is going to be there, GUA will have to go on a delay. But if he just rushes into feudal, which he's now doing, he'll just get one or two archers out. Avali's comp is all of a sudden worthless. And instead, GUA can play out into Deers safely. Avali won't be able to because he needs to get a counter in place. It gets worse than that. Where is that Spearman going? Look at that. Feels like Avala isn't even trying is to he? attack the base of GUA because he knows fully well where the base is, but the Spearman is heading to the north. Khan actually spotted him, so he knows fully well what's up, but yeah, it looks a little awkward that Avala's Spearman is just kind of hanging around over here. Kind of makes me feel like this is more like an extra scout rather than an actual combat unit right now. I, I, no, I think he was actually trying to predict the movement and intercept, and then the calm would arrive, and then you'd like slowly kill him off, right? It, it's such a unlikely play. Like, there must be another lead. He's trading. He's trading. It's oh. the trade. Avalie's now setting up the trade. The outpost has been placed. Oh, that's what he was waiting for. That kind of explains okay. the story. Now, GUA saw the Spearman heading there, and he probably had the same question as what we had. Why is that Spearman heading to the north? Why is it not heading towards me? So he probably has a good clue about that himself. And GUA used the GUR to scout that area. So he knows fully well that there is going to be possibly possibility for a trade. He's coming in with an archer range. This could be a prime time for Mangadai and snipe those traders. I think this could be a 10 minute GG. Could be. If Avali goes four traders and then GUA is built to Magadai, I think Avali just can't win. Like it, it's such a big disadvantage. I, it, it's so worrisome. So Avali needs to be on point with scouting. Uh, just to kind of like round out, because we were like, why is, it, why is he going to spear? Is it kind of pseudo scout? If you want to do scouts, remember that with the Mongols, you can build a stables in the Dark Age. So it was never about the scouting element. It was always going to be about this trade. Yep, that's a good point. And speaking of those horsemen, having that spearman out there also means that you can get that tower up awesome. close to the market. That's, mm -hmm. that's Dark Age Con versus Feudal Age Con. And wait a minute, did we cancel the range or did we just move it? Okay, it's just a move and we have yep. Mangadai coming in with double production. And, and this is quite problematic because, you know, the Mangadai makes a lot of sense because Avali, he pulls his Spearman and GUA would have been kind of thinking, what's the Spearman about? And then he identifies where the trade post is. So he already knew the trade was coming. This was, so this was always planned by him to counter it out. But Avali has got the correct solution here. He went into Horsemen. Horsemen that are a more select, a more effective solution to Magadai. Because we have to remember, Magadai's movement speed did get nerfed down to 1.56. Meanwhile, Horsemen are still up at 1.88 movement speed. And you do have the cons buff arrow as well for Avali to boost the movement speed. So yeah, that's, mm. that's a great way to deal with these. Now, Horsemen can be an option for GUA. He also went for a stable himself. And once he does that, they are possibly playing with identical compositions, as we could see Avali mixing a couple of Mangadai as well. And that's a little scary for Avali because his eco is going to be much more fragile or much easily much more easily rateable than GUA's one. GUA is going to have a very compact, very safe economy with sustainability, having that pasture dropped early. 
as compared to Evely, who's going to have a very much exposed eco with the trade. Yeah, and one upside for Avali is by going Mass Horseman here, if he intends to set up more outposts on his trade route, he's going to have that Yan, right? So he'll be able to gap close. Yep. G-Way, meanwhile, is less likely to extend that influence out across the map, which is unfortunate because he'd go for a Deer Stone. So even infantry would move substantially faster had he moved out for an early outpost. Yeah, now this is a bit of, a, bit of a miscalculation by GUA running the Mangadai into the Horseman. As you said, Horseman will catch up to the Mangadai. Very pricey units going down the drain over here thanks That's to those Horsemen. I mean, it's insane, right? That's just, So compared to where Magadai used to be on the speed, they only lost 0.06 movement speed. But you can see how big of a difference it just made. Like, those Magadai got rinsed. It, it's, it's not pretty now. And remember, the Magadai, they cost more than each individual horseman, right? Yes. 124 horsemen, Magadai 160. And they're very fragile. Their base HP, especially in Feudal Age, is rather low. So even just a couple of hits from those horsemen, and you're going to lose one of those very precious Magadai that you had. And it looks like GUA is even going to give up on the entire Mangadai project, just going heavy on the Spearman and Horseman department. First trader just not coming in, though, but this is scouted by GUA, and that trader should be gone. Oh, he finally finds someone for his value, because the opportunity, it's, it's shutting, right? The window's closing. Avalee's starting to set up these outposts along the trade route, at which point, you know, there's going to be an easy way for these traders to be saved, but not just that, they'll be moving quicker. Yep. Still, though, not a lot of trade going on for Avalee, so that window is still open for GUA. And one of the things I love is that this trade route is actually very close to that central stealth forest. GUA can use that as a rally point or as a staging ground and just keep harassing these traders. Traders that we don't really see much of up until now. And this is a really cool switch up by GUA going into now normal arches and spearmen. Think about the cost of these units, and you realize that actually you can get an archer and a spearman for the same price as a Magadha. It's so much better for him, right? So now, he doesn't feel kind of stretched on his eco. He still has a usage with his archery range. And is now going to make sure that Avali doesn't really have the grand solution as the game goes on. For the time being, he at least has the numbers to take reasonable fights. The archers are some of a distraction, which should allow his horsemen to still exchange reasonably well, especially with the arrival of Red Spears. Yeah, the Spearman, definitely a game changer because there is no direct response from Avali for them. He's just now starting to mix in archers, but right now this combination, Horseman Spearman, works a little better here for GUA. And this actually goes all the way back to the meta from Season 2 even, where we have seen so frequently that Horseman Spearman will always beat that Horseman plus Archer combination. Well, the goal is to like smoothly transition to the trio, right? Like you want all three. Archers have so much value. Archers are also out the free, the best unit to then start hitting and killing villages. Horsemen will be more efficient at forcing idle time, but archers are just simply better at getting one-to-one -one kills. There we go, this exchange that I just, it honestly just feels like GOA is out bikering. He keeps forcing Avali to peel his horsemen past the red horses, right? Which means that by the time you're arriving in your target the archers, you've already been hit once or twice by the horsemen you're ignoring. Ouch, Khan could be lost over here, or will it? Khan gets away, but not the forces of Avali, and he's once again just boxed inside his base. And that's actually concerning for him. He wanted to go for this trade, but he simply can't leave his base. Very reminiscent to what we've seen in game number one, actually, when it comes to how boxed in he was. Yeah, and no one should be hopping copium right now and go, well, Avali's trading at least. Avali has no traders going on right yep. now. Right, so he's he's not benefiting from this stalemate just outside his base. Instead, he has idle eco. GA does have to be a little bit careful not to throw away too mil uh, many military units here, though, as you're noticing that this outpost has got premium value out of this fight for Avali. Absolutely. Although one thing that is more than concerning for Avali is that for a brief moment he had 26 idle eco. I'm not exactly sure what happened in there, but maybe he ran out of food under his town center or something along those lines. He's focusing very much on microing these fights, but. Once you have a bit of a downtime, it would be lovely to take a look at his eco because we could see weaknesses starting to show in that department. I think Avali, like, he sent the one trader out again. So, like, he had this one trader that I think he left him in the base for a bit because GOA just kept flirting the idea of assaulting him. I think he actually found the perfect timing, though. Yeah, so he's going to yeah. get away with this. And I think that that should be a spearman in the outpost. I don't think that's another trader. It's still a little something extra, though, right? Um, whether it's going to be good enough for him long term is the big question mark because why I'm seeing is a situation where Avali only has one deer stack. Meanwhile, GUA has easy access to two, right? So if this just continues as a stalemate and you only have one trader who has to idle half the time, I do favor GUA's position. I agree. I 100% agree. 
GUA is much more well set up long term. He's got sustainability, he's got the hunt available. He also has dropped a couple of pastures back in the days. And some of his villagers, like the Lumberjacks we're looking at, for example, they are actually buffed by the Deer Stones. So there is that as well for him. Whereas on the other side for Avali, his entire strategy relies on those traders, and a single trader won't be enough to make the difference. Well, I think that trader should now die, though. Like this, if, if he somehow gets through again, I'm going to be very surprised. Like this would be the worst blockade ever. Like they clearly aren't doing their jobs. He's definitely scouting for it around the sides. Yeah. At this point, as crazy as it sounds, you could justify pushing that uh, silver tree into the corner and just trying to sneak a trade in if you're heavily. Because it's not like GUA was probing that ground by any means. He's just setting up a blockade right here, waiting for those traders to be intercepted. But it's not like he's actually actively going to the back of Avalay's base. So if Avalay wants to get away with a trade, I think he has the option to do so. He could probably be able to sneak in a couple of traders before GUA notices. He's kind of been checking the sides, right? Like, the, the rough part is if you check where GOA is looking towards that neutral trade post on the left, all those stealth forests are there. So his vision is very obscured. And I'm pretty sure Mavali was able to sneak uh, his trader through to the stealth forest to get past with that trade. That's why it keeps working. It's unfortunate with GOA. Like, if he just stopped and built one scout and sent it over there, this would never happen. This side he's been brilliant with, by the way. He sat a horseman right on that trade post, and finally it's starting to pay for itself. Hasn't quite finished the job, but this should be the situation where I'm never expecting that trader to get out again. Oh, this clash is a rough one right now for GOA. I, it's kind of weird to think how great he's been at containing the threat, but... It also feels like GUA was forced to throw away a lot of troops in a way that Avali now is starting to look a lot better than his opponent. Yeah, keep in mind that reinforcing was much easier there for Avali, whereas for GUA, he had to walk all across the map. Now decides to take this fight, though. He's got a lot of spearmen nearby. Nice. He could butcher the cavalry, but the archers, they're slowly focusing down the spears, and the difference makers right now seem to be those archers on the back line for Avali. Yeah, I believe that. That was a brilliant peel, the horsemen. They went around the wide flank and that drew most of the attention away. The problem is, Gio just had sheer mass on his side. Just so many horsemen working to his advantage. He's able to come over the top and now push back against this. Avalon on the retreat, likely to lose several more of the archers. Of course, you can't breach with this sizable force, right? It's not enough to punch through the front door. But it should be enough to stop that trader from making another trip. Yeah, we are seeing a very even back and forth over here. As you get closer to one's base, reinforcing becomes much easier, especially with double training still available. So there, there is there always going to be that factor where one player pushes and the other one suddenly has the overwhelming numbers. And Gio is going to exploit this. He goes for a second town center. And the reason why I love this KP is because this is going to be unscouted by Avali for so long. Yeah, it's like, actually, if we think about how the game has gone, I don't think Avali has looked on his opponent's side of the map for, like, basically the whole game, right? Since his Khan made the first lap around. Like, the closest he's had to eyeballs on is that outpost he has near the neutral trade post. Like, everything has been defensive. And the reason for that, by the way, is because Avali's only scout is his Khan. He needs that Khan to always be available for a clutch movement speed arrow to get him out of a jam. These horsemen, they're just so pesky, they're so annoying, and they also collect a lot of intel. They see that there are barely any traders, and more importantly, they see that Avali is on berries. That's a position of weakness. When you are on berries with the Mongols, that just tells GUA, okay, I'm in a good spot. Good spot to walk into the game, though. I think his goal here is just to get double the horsemen Avali has, and then force a fight after baiting Avali out. I think that's the best way you can approach this. Like, you see he's already starting to wheel himself out into the flanks and try to probe. And he understands, right? Like, this is the phase where Avali doesn't have great food sources. Meanwhile, GUA still does. After GUA is done with that deer, he could easily go towards the board. In fact, that's the reason GUA is up here. He's concerned that Avali is doing the same. But as we know, Avali's only choice at this rate is to transition into pastures, which will put you at a big disadvantage initially. Exactly. GUA has set up some pastures before, so... He's slowly stockpiling on sheep as well, but as you pointed out, he has both deer patches very safe over here. Look at that. He already has some pastures going as well. He still has the boar. So he's going to have a decent stockpile of backup sheep by the time he depletes the hunt. Yeah, and Avali still has no way to know about this TC. It, I don't think he really is going to discover. Like, Avali wants to go Castle Age, so Jiwei just gets away with this greed for free. The cool thing is these horsemen just keep wiggling on the sides, which... Probably forces Avali to invest in more military just because he feels threatened. Yeah, and look at that. 
sneak units pushing through that stealth forest out there. Once again, just intercepting the trade. Such a lovely move by GUA. He pulls the Cavalry of Evely to the right side with his own, and then just moves in on the left side to try and pick off those traders. Now, he just trades Cavalry for the time being, but there goes the trader. GUA could commit, but instead he's heading to the north. Might actually go for that injured one. GUA should be getting a little bit suspicious of what's happening here. Oh, he's here going for because... the board. He's going for the hunters, yeah. KP. Exactly. Because this is the thing. Like, Avali's not building more military. So what's he doing? He must be being greedy somewhere. He must be running out of food. Or he must be going for a tech up. GUA. Did he not... I think he saw it. But he clicked away. Maybe he didn't want to get close oh. to the villagers as they were fighting the boar. Because boar aggro was on the closest unit. So he probably didn't want to risk the life of those horsemen. But he could go back now, now because the tower wasn't completed. Yeah, he should now know because he's come back across and the berries have expired and he knows that they aren't being gathered on the eastern side. So he either just commits on the wood line or goes back towards the boar. But if you're already here, might as well murder a few lumberjacks, right? Or get exactly. murdered by the lumberjack brothers. Yep, that, that could happen too. And Avalon is now caught in between. He has a bunch of resources in the bank, but he's not there in Castle Age just yet, but he also doesn't have the army to hold this off with now. And you could see a commitment on the gold mine even. That could be, that could be fatal. If you reach Costlage with no access to gold, you won't have access to those premium units and your Costlage timing will be for nothing. The torch down will begin and here's the roughest part of this. Avali can't go for Costlage. He has to trade for it instead. So he loses a bit of efficiency there and now on his way up. But as you said, no way to now easily push into Lancers or Men at Arms. Meanwhile, g -way, if he just doubles down on the raw horseman count, he could push Avali out of this game. Right now, he's looking to push this mass of archers into an early grave. That stealth forest coming in clutch for GUA. Avali didn't know where those horsemen were coming from, and this is a very convenient fight here for GUA. No spearmen nearby for Avali, just a couple of horsemen, but his archers will all be taken down. And look at that, spearmen committing oh against God. this. And there's gonna be nothing left for Avali when he reaches Castleage. And honestly, at this point, it's not a matter of when he reaches Castleage, but if he reaches Castleage at this pace. Whoa. Wait, wait, wait. No, 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 Lydico, I've seen this before. Avali just lost all these villagers. It's fine. He's got the fishing boat. Oh, this is Lepony. Okay, this might be a problem. Oh, this is terrible. And remember, he's actually lucky to have those boar villagers survive. That could have been a massacre on the northern side, an opportunity that the GUA missed out on. But now, 60 army against 10. And look at the gold income for Avali, KP. Zero per minute. And it's not like he has a safe gold mine he can work with. The step right out without the gold mine next to useless. Barely any traders working for him and oh no. Oh no. Uh, oh no. Is it a tree? Is it a step? No redoubt about it. It's a landmark that's doing nothing. And Avali will have no easy use for it. His rage will just keep coming around the flanks. He can't even easily play west side because he's already drawn attention to where his trade has been running. Like, dude, I'm looking at the gold vein locations and there are really none that Avali can get here. Yeah, exactly. Remember, his starting PC wasn't close to a gold mine and that's a big factor right now. There was a big difference between the two players at the beginning of the game. And now the fact that that gold mine is exposed with no town center nearby is really something that's hurting him pretty badly. I'm just... It's okay though. Avali has a secret castleage. You see that camouflage step readout? GUA doesn't know he's up against castleage units, I'm telling you. <laughs> no possible. Well, what do you mean he knows? Well, oh, no. speaking of castleage, we have the brand new coral tie coming in here, and this is not your old ordinary coral tie. This has been buffed quite a bit, and especially in the position that GUA is in, it's a terrific landmark to use here for this assault. I always just call the coral die, and that still holds true, but the other way these times, instead of dying from building it, you ensure your opponent's going to die. It's the double down that lets you really push them out of the game. And, well, we saw a game where Avali had to really drag it out, had to kind of milk the opportunities, and, you know, take his time burning his opponent, but we know Geo doesn't play that way. No doubt the coral tie will eventually be on the way across the map. I think it's on its way now. Once that's parked, I wouldn't be surprised if Avali just waves the white flag. He will have to. Right now, he's hoping for this tower to save him, but Castlage upgrades are not in just yet for GUA. He actually finds oh. the villagers on the northern side as well. Once Castlage upgrades come in, once Traction Trebuchet has arrived, these towers won't last long. For the time being, GUA doesn't have a response to those men arms, but this is all that Evoli can afford. Nine men arms, two lancers, that's it. He has no more gold to work with.
And I respect these guys for how long they, they hold on, right? Because like, we saw in the last game, GUA was definitely miles behind. You tried to find a way. Avali is the same way. He scouted that second TC, I'm pretty sure, when he ran around the backside of the base. He should have known the kind of eco deficient, uh, like, disadvantages that, right? Like, just look at the destroyed workers. Yep. Even if you didn't know about the other TC, you might be an inkling you're a disadvantage of how many of your workers have died between traders and villagers. But yet, Avali still tries to persevere on. His one edge, he's into cavalry first, he's into armor units first. But when you're on the defensive like that, Lancers are your only edge, right? The men at arms yep. play doesn't work here because you're not leveraging your tech up advantage. Instead, GA will have the counter crossbows by the time you arrive. Exactly. Like Lancers, you will have the mobility, but. When it comes to the men at arms, that unit would be useful if you were the aggressor rather than being the defender. Now GUA is going to have to have the crossbows out there. He's mixing in his own lancers. He's a very convenient eco lead of over 45 eco units. And he also has the coral die, which, well, even if it's not a gigantic game changer, it is still something to consider when it comes to this assault coming up. It's pretty absurd now the way it functions when you consider the crossbows now get the bonus damage increase, right? Like, so G-Way with crossbows with the Kuril tie counters basically everything Avali's pushing. If Avali doesn't yep. have a Maganel to defend with by the time this assault arrives, he's probably just gonna be dead on arrival. But, but it's difficult, right? Look at the wood income here for Avali. He managed to get back on the gold, but now there is different issue. It's wood. He essentially depleted his starting forest and he doesn't have control over the Eastern side to secure the other one. But G-Way is going to play this patiently. He's going to play something very similar to what he did in the first game. Just secure sacred sites, secure relics, and basically make no move to throw this game away. Because as much as Avalon doesn't know how much behind he is, he knows he's behind, but he doesn't know the extent of it. It's also true that GOA might not fully grasp how big his advantage is. Can we check the for Avalon's Uvu? Because I don't think he has one. He's holding a lot of stone and he's just not putting it to work. Like, you, you need everything you can have right now. Like, so I can only imagine that he just doesn't have a way of using those resources. Yeah, it's just over here. It's not being used. So he's got almost 800 stone. He's not upgrading towers, right? Because he already accidentally put, like, spring, uh, put the archer ship, uh, archer, uh, arrow slits words in them in some, some cases. He's not double producing lances. Like, it, it doesn't get much worse than this for him. Like, you need every small advantage you can get if you want a chance to turn this around. Exactly, but now crossbow mass building up over here and Avalik can't afford Ingle, even a single knight like that being lost. Now Korota is being pushed up. I think the only ingredient that's missing here for GUA is some heavy siege. A couple of traction trebuchets to really start taking down those towers with. Ingredients? What's he cooking right here? Yeah, really cool. What meal is this? I'll tell you what it is. It's a cake that's been in <laughs> for an hour too long. Because right now, Avali is getting burnt. Like, there, there's no other way to describe this. The It's about to get worse as well, because I'm pretty sure GUA can now just go into Siege Engineering Improved, set up, like, one or two trebuchets, and take his sweet-ass time. Even Maganels here would be phenomenal. Remember, Maganels do uh, bonus damage against Siege, and that also now gets juiced up by Kurotai. Yeah, at this point, I'm actually unsure what exactly GUA is planning, because he's hoarding quite a lot of resources, so much so that you might even consider Imperial with that resource bank, but looks like he's going to double down as he should and commit to this fight. Khan actually survives the initial part of the engagement, but then crossbows are just there to pick apart the man in arms, and this is not a position that Avalie can hold. The golden glow, the golden horde. No easy way to stop him. Avalie, this is the entire army, and it is going to be completely disintegrated. They're just desperately trying to keep the outpost alive, but. At this stage, GUA could just dive past and murder the last of your villagers. There's not many of them. In fact, <laughs> if GUA just looks to the right of this fight, he has the easiest job as the village butcher imaginable. I think there's about 20 villagers in the green completely undefended to the right of this. Yeah, and he actually managed to sneak a tower there, if I'm not mistaken. The tower was near completion when we last checked on it. If he managed to get it up, that tower might just tickle away at the villagers with a sprinkle them placement on it. Yeah, there it is. Eventually. <laughs> They're not that deep on the wood yet. If everyone's like, well, why is he holding on so long? People don't like being in the lower bracket because I call it loser's bracket. But unfortunately for Avali, that's where he's headed. GOA continues on in the upper. And Avali will have to redeem himself in that lower bracket. Yeah, what a set. And this is actually an upset if you look at the seeds. 46, 
versus 17. GUA had a great start on Rocky Canyon. Then we had an interesting game on Holy Islands, especially because it's not like GUA was in a terrible position for long. It really was just a matter of losing one critical naval engagement and then the game snowballing out of control. But here, he had a much better established game plan and the trade simply didn't work out for Avalay. GUA had a nice reaction to it and he shut it down before it really even began. Yeah, and as a result of that, you know, GUA... Looking uh, pretty confident. I, I think he has to be somewhat, you know, content with the way that series went down. Like even in the game that he lost, it looked like he was finding ways of potentially salvaging it. Avali always having the edge, but you know, the 